But it, let's talk about how to use a Bunsen burner. More specifically, this is the type known as a Tiro burner. And this Tiro burner has two controls that are really important for getting a properly adjusted flame that will allow you to do your experiment properly. Now, when working with this, you will leave it down on the countertop. You don't want to pick it up like what I'm doing here, but I'm going to pick it up so that I can make the workings of it more visible to you, the viewer. Now, one of the important workings is right here. It is a valve that controls the gas flow. Now, this gas flow valve is turned like this, and when you open the valve, you screw it so the valve moves downward, and that increases the gas flow. When you close the valve, you screw it so it moves upward, and that decreases the gas flow. This, on the other hand, is the valve that controls the airflow. When you turn that valve that controls the airflow and move it upward, this opens up a gap at the top. And the bigger that gap, the more air goes in. So this is about as high as you would want to be unscrewing it. You don't want to go any further because if you go too far, that happens. And you don't want that to happen when the flame is lit. So you do open it to adjust the airflow by opening it to have more and close it to have less. So when you're starting off with your gas burner, make sure you adjust this here, not here, you'll get burned. And the other thing, of course, is all the adjustments you saw me doing with this or with this need to happen down on the tabletop. So here's what it looks like when you adjust the gas flow. Notice how I have my fingers on opposite sides of it doing this. You want to do the same, but down here. Same for the airflow, you do it down here on the countertop, not holding it up. Okay, so when you start, the airflow valve should be closed, that means screwed all the way down, and the gas flow valve should be closed, meaning screwed all the way up, so that no gas can flow. Before you do anything, you check all your equipment, make sure this is good, having no damage, that everything's closed. You make sure that this is good too. The gas line needs to be free of cracks or damage. And then here, you need to make sure this is closed. Don't start doing things with it being open. Now, how do you know whether this is closed or open? You know by the position of this. This is the handle. When it is not lined up with this, it's closed. So this is open, this is closed. This is also closed. So when it's open, don't open it partway, open it all the way. But that'll be what we get to in just a little sec. That is actually not the first step. So let's talk about now, how do you actually go about lighting and adjusting it. Let's go back and have a look at the gas burner. So what you do when you're ready to light it and you've checked that all equipment is good, you give this three turns. One, oops, sorry. One, two, three. Now you notice I tried to turn it the wrong direction. That happens all the time. So don't try to memorize which direction to turn it. Just give it those three turns. And that will usually give enough gas flow for this thing to work. Then what you do is leave this alone for now and you go over to turn on the gas. So you turn it on all the way. If you listen, you might be able to hear the gas flowing. You then strike this in order to get a flame ignition. So this is called the safety flame. No extra oxygen is being added to it because it's just the gas flow right now. So it doesn't get any oxygen until it's up here. And so this is not a flame you want to work with in the lab. It's just the low temperature safety flame. Now, how did I do that? I lit it using this. This is the striker that has a little flint right here, and it rubs against a steel grate right here. So you have to make sure the striker is inside, of course. And then you hold it like this. Notice how my hand is on the bottom side. And then I have my fingers on one part and the portion that moves right here is what I use my thumb, because the thumb is the strongest of your fingers. You use that thumb to push the flint sideways and simultaneously push the flint down into the grate. So I'm kind of pushing at a 45 degree angle like that. And as long as you have enough force both this way and this way, you'll get a spark every time. All right, now, that being what that is, you are looking at the safety flame. Again, you do not use this for an actual experiment. So how do you adjust it? Well, the next step is you check to make sure the gas is on all the way. 
you give a quick little check, open the gas up a little more. Does the flame get taller? If not, then it's as open as it needs to be. So in this case, changing the gas flow doesn't affect the height of the flame, so the gas flow is good. So what I'm going to do now is adjust the airflow. And now I'm going to open this valve, turning it down here. Notice how I'm using one hand to steady the gas burner and the other hand to open the valve. And I'm going to, I'm actually using my thumb. You can either use two fingers or just one, but you've got to go a little ways toward opening it up. And now I say a little ways toward opening it. When you're done opening it, you want to have it so that the valve is about screwed roughly three quarters to 80% of the way up leaving this mostly open. So we say, in other words, turn on the gas, light the flame, and then open the air all the way. And then when the air is open all the way, you'll notice that the flame is blue because it's got much more oxygen in there. Now sometimes you'll find you may have an inner blue cone right away, sometimes you won't. This does not yet have a well-defined inner blue cone, and that's how we know the flame's ready to go. So after you turn up the gas all the way, and after you open this all the way, we'll call it all the way, uh, the next step is to turn down the gas flow until you see a very well-defined inner blue cone. That is a well-defined inner blue cone. That is, right here, the hottest part of the flame, the tip of that inner blue cone, and that is what you would want touching the beaker you're heating up or the experiment you're heating up with the ceramic dish or whatever it may be you're going to work with the tip of that inner blue cone for all of your experiments so that is what it should look like when it is properly adjusted so just to review how do you do this you open the gas valve light the flame open the open the airflow all the way and then turn down the gas until you see that properly adjusted inner blue cone so that's what it should look like now you can do your experiment and now let's imagine your experiment is finished. How do you turn it off? First thing you do is actually leave this alone and instead go to the valve. Simply turn it off. Then we look back over here and what we're going to do is safety things. We're going to close the air valve all the way. Notice how I use my finger to quickly close it. And then we're also going to close the gas valve all the way. Why? Here's the reason why. Let's take a look back over here at the gas valve. Sometimes people may accidentally open the gas valve. If that happens, this safety feature ensures that gas will not come out of here so we can avoid accidental flames and explosions. All right, ladies and gentlemen, so there is your overview of how it is that you light and adjust a gas burner.